the Torah says, Darkea Darkei Noam, Ekol Netivotea Shalom. All her paths come in peace, and the Torah is only about Shalom, but living in peace and happiness. So if something doesn't work out, it means that it didn't come in peace. Now, some people say, no, I was very nice. If the intention, the thought, the everything comes with peace, it's very rare that it's not going to work out. So there's no black and white answer because every family is completely different. The dynamics of the entire family is totally different from one household to another household. But when it's done with love and with real love and respect and with no ego and with no agenda, that's when it actually affects. If you go to a person and your words coming out of your heart, they will go into the heart. If your words are coming out of your mouth, same thing with actions. People are, people are sensitive. They can feel when you're for real and when you're not. And, you know, nothing happens overnight. If you're trying to change a situation in a home, it can come ho overnight. A, it's extremely important that there's some type of a plan. If, you, if you're building a building, you need some plan. Whatever you do, you need a plan. You're going on vacation, you need a plan. You want to change the entire behavior of the house, has to be a plan. Because you can't just jump in and say, okay, that's it. And the plan has to be done with the heads of the house. I'm talking when it comes to a household, to a family. Uh, the plan has to be done equally with the parents. And if there's arguments there, then the parents, for the sake of the entire house, have to find the, the equal path. And if they can't find, find it by themselves, then they need to bring somebody that is aware to say, okay, you have to do it like this and like that. As, there's a way to do everything. But really when the intention is coming from a loving place, and most houses, households, there's always going to be some type of argument. The husband says A, the wife says B. That's a normal thing. But that only happens when, when there's no real, real love to the Kadosh Baruch Hu. Because if I come now, I also have a wife. And Baruch Hashem. And she's a wonderful wife, but we, as two human beings, we, we always come to some point that we disagree on something. It's a normal thing. But I don't let the disagreement escalate to a point that it will cause a crack in the house. And I know that sometimes I have to give up or give in. Sometimes she gives in. And since the dynamics of the relationship is, is a very respectful relationship, there's no ego in the relationship, then, yeah, sometimes you have to give in. Sometimes you have to give up. Okay, I'll do what's good. And if it's done the right way, when we, you include Hashem in everything, then the relationship with the disagreements, disagreement is just because you're two human beings. But it's like a puzzle. You can take many puzzle pieces. You can't be stubborn and stuck a certain puzzle piece in, in the wrong place. The puzzle piece will be fits only in one place. And that's the whole dynamics of relationships, that you're trying sometimes to force the puzzle piece where it doesn't belong. You have to remove that puzzle piece, bring a different puzzle piece, till you get the picture to be perfect. So, you know, it's, it sounds like a cliché, but the word man in Hebrew is ish, and the word woman in Hebrew is isha. They have two similar letters, aleph and shin, and the man has a yud, and the woman has a hay. Yud and the hay, they of course it represents Hashem, Yud K. And if a person, if a couple, they include Hashem in everything that we do, then they behave like a, a man and a woman, a Nish Isha. But if Chaz Shalom they take Hashem out of the equation, then you take the Yud and the hay out, then you're only left with Aleph and Shin, which is fire, Esh. Then nothing works out. So if everything is done according to the, the opinion of the Torah, Da'at Torah, and it's done with love and respect to the Kadosh Baruch Hu, and it's done based on what Hashem wants me to do, then that's the problem with most people is that they have their own agenda and they have their ego. They don't say, what does Hashem want me to do? They say, what is convenient for me? So when a person knows how to surrender, then all the paths, all the nativea, the paths open. 
So yeah, uh, there's no such a thing that you know, like in the movies that the the marriage is about romance and walking into the sunset hand in hand. That doesn't. That's not the reality. The reality is that it's a relationship of give and take, and when you know how to lower a little bit of yourself. Assuming that the other side is functioning on the same level, then the household is functioning in a very healthy way. And then you can reach to the goals that you want to reach. Because really the kids, the kids, they just tag along. And that's the problem of a lot of parents, that unfortunately there's no parenting school. But the kids, they look up at the parents and they learn everything from the parents. Everything that you see in your kids that you don't like, it's because you and your husband did it. Not on, I'm not talking directly to you. I may be looking at you. It's not even a mirror, it's a role model. So, you know, I teach my kids, I want to teach them to love Hashem. You can't fool a kid. So if my kid sees that I lie, that I cheat, that I disrespect, that I scream, that all these things, then he's saying religion, lie, cheat, screaming, no, 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 not for me. That's not for me. Kids, you can fool them. I'm talking even in a three-year-old. So, you know, I, 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 I shared it once that when my second son was born, so we have a custom that the Friday night before the, the Brit, Brit Mila, we do a, like a meal, it's called Shalom Zachar. It's like you bring a lot of uh, treats and, and uh, everybody comes and gives you a blessing. It's a nice, nice custom. So we made a big uh, event in our home. Many, many people from the community came. And suddenly, this big rabbi from the community comes. Wow, it was a big, uh, big honor, big respect. And of course, everybody throughout the night is raising their cups. She, your son should be a Talmid Chacham. Your son should have Yirat Shamaim. Should be God-fearing. Your son should be a good student. Your son, your son, your son. And I was kept waiting for the big rabbi to say something. And finally, when he took the stand, he told me, I'm, I'm not going to give you a bracha. I'm not going to give you a blessing. I'm going to give you advice. Whatever you want your son to be, you be. You want your son to be successful in school? Show him what it is to, to, what it is to learn. You want your son to have love to Hashem? Show him what it is to love Hashem. You want your son to go in the morning to pray? You go in the morning to pray. Don't come and wave hands and, and, pretend, and think that that's what he's going to do. So most of us, we don't give the right example to kids. Kids are really smart, and they don't look at things as they are and go to the room and analyze it. A four-year-old doesn't go to the room to analyze what his mommy told him right away. So the worst thing we, we do is we lie to our kids all day long. From the day the, they, they understand, we lie to them. That's why most people don't have emuna. Most people, their struggle in their relationship to Hashem is they don't have belief. Rabbi Nachman from Breslev says, close to 300 years ago, the test, the problem that we're going to have in our generation, right before Mashiach comes, is a test of emunah. Nobody's going to have emunah. They might play the role, but there's no emunah. And I, and I, I once told a, a joke, but it's, it's kind of to understand really what's going on. That there was once a, a Jew, became a very close to the Torah, like a Baal Tshuva, Chazar B'Tshuva. And, you know, for two, three years, like a, like a semi-trailer, pushing forward, adding all these mitzvot. He was like a, like a shining star. At some point, you know, they look from the heavenly court and they say, okay, it's time to give this uh, young man a test. It's not all easy. We gave him two, three years to catch up. Now put him a test. They sit all there in the heavenly court and they decide what's going to be the test. So one of the judges says, let's test him with money. Okay, they all agree. And then the next day he loses five dollars. You know what was his reaction? Baruch Hashem, Akoletova. Everything is for the best. Everything that Hashem does is good. Hashem is so amazing. Kaparata Vonot. Oh, it's amazing. Wow. The whole heavenly court was impressed. Wow. Look, he didn't even tweak. Nothing. So one of the judges, they said, okay, how about we bump it up a little bit? Let's see, you know, $5 is not a lot of money. Let's bump it up. Let's see how he reacts. The next week, he loses $50. The 
The same reaction, Baruch Hashem, everything is good, Hashem is so amazing, Kaparat Avonot, everything is good. Wow! They were very impressed. So another judge comes and says, let's, let's, uh, let's uh, push the pedal to the metal, or whatever you say that. Let's, all the way. The next week he loses $50,000. Suddenly not everything is Letova. Suddenly it's not Kaparat Avonot. Suddenly, why? Who? Hashem? Why are you doing this? Soon in one second, the level of emunah <laughs> went down to the toilet. So when something happens, something small happens in my life, oh, Hashem is amazing. There's a little bit of pressure, a few more zeros in the amount. Oh, suddenly, my emunah is this big. I don't believe. So when the test is small, it's very easy to believe. When the test is pressed too much, then my emunah <laughs> goes out of the window. So the reality is that why don't we have emunah? Why don't we have belief? Is because a baby is born with 100% belief. There's no problem with, this, with the component of belief. We're born with belief. Because the soul sees Hashem. There's no reason not to believe in Hashem. Believes in Hashem 100%. Now the baby comes out to the world. And after about a year, they start having a little bit of some, uh, some sechel. They start understanding. And then they meet the harsh reality that their parents start lying to them. And, and they, it, it shakes their system. What? Mommy just lied to me? How can it be? Because the reality, when the baby comes out, they have 100% emunah, and the proof to it is when you feed the baby. You give the baby something to eat. You think he asks you, whoa, 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 whoa. Is this uh, badats? What are you giving me? Is this all you? Are you putting something in my mouth? Whoa. The baby, the baby believes right away. No, no questions. Not looking for hechsher. You come to take the baby home. Wait, wait. <laughs> the baby doesn't say, let, "Let me consult here with my friends. Maybe give me some reviews, some uh, testimonials. Are you a good mom? Maybe you're not a good mom. Maybe I want to stay here." <laughs> so the baby believes everything, but after a year or two, the parents start lying to the baby, and we constantly lie to our kids, and then their sibling, and then their kindergarten teacher, and then the the first grade teacher, and before you know it, a six or seven year old doesn't believe anything. Because everybody lied to them. Because you tell your child, if you're not going to clean your room, you're not going to get dessert. He didn't clean the room, and voila, you got dessert. Mom, he's a liar. So, and then you see a teenager, after that half of their life, they were lied to. You tell them there's a God in the heavens. <laughs> no such a thing. You have to do mitzvot. No, I don't believe. So I go to religious schools, orthodox schools in big cities. I see the teen, the teens, they don't believe in nothing. They might follow because they're afraid of their parents. Half of them in the 14, 13, 15, and they're out. Don't believe in nothing. So society now, we have a problem with emuna. We don't believe in nothing. And, and the, the, the blame is beginning with the parents. So the child sees what's going on, a parent screams at the child, they don't go to the room and says, oh, you know, my poor mommy, she has stress, and there's some financial problems, and I'll forgive her. The kid takes this scream, and right away develops this animosity, and anger towards the parent. Now, if the parent is looking like this, then the Torah is also like that. And then it continues, and it grows, and it grows, and you know, most people... They might behave a certain way, but the children, they see everything. And you know how many households, you'll hear like the door knocking, suddenly the father, shh, shh, I don't know, it's a guy that comes to ask for money, shh, shh, get up. I'm not home, but you are home, shh. <laughs> so suddenly he was like, wait a minute, was my father's fake, my father's a liar, he pretends to be so kind and good, but... He, he lies, he says, tells me to tell on the phone, I'm not home, but you are home. Shh. So we mess up our kids' minds. And then we expect them to be good kids and to love Hashem and to run to shul. And, to, and when they, they don't, we get upset. So we are the architects of our, gen, our, of our kids. So it's not so simple to, to make that everything is smooth and how we want. They have to have a good plan. And mainly... You have to initiate and to show and to give example. Other than that, you can have zero demands 
to the kids and you can't expect the household to function in a nice way when the top is not acting the right way. So, chas v'shalom, it's not to, to blame somebody in anything. But we all want to have a nice smooth household. It's a lot of work. It's not so simple. And of course, you know, when you come to any type of relationship with an ego, then that will never, never work. It's very easy to start a fight and I'm right and I wanted to do a beer according to my way. And you know what? When things are going hand to hand, that's when you get the best partnership because it's done to, together. Husband and wife, that they know how to together do things and there's love and respect and, and, and you know, I don't know the word in Hebrew, but levater, giving in. And then the relationship is very healthy, healthy relationship. And it's very hard for us to give in. No, it has to go my way. If it has to go my way, then it's the problem with my ego.